my lady, the Chief Justice, the Deputy Chief Justice, and the members of the uh, Supreme Court, it's indeed a great honor to appear before you in relation to this petition. Uh, my role today here is to take you through the numbers. I will take you through the numbers. Uh, the numbers will be running Counsel, on the screen. Your, your name, please. Uh, my name is Mahar Somane, Advocate. My name, uh, my name is Mahar Somane, Advocate. I'll take you through the numbers as it relates to the petition that has been filed. I will also give you an audit trail of mechanism which the court can use to measure the, the petition. The, question, the first question that I'll answer today uh, relates to the question that has been put to us. And the first one is whether the postponement of gubernatorial elections in Kakamega and Mombasa counties, parliamentary elections in Kitui rural, Kachaliba, Rongai, and Pokot South constituencies, and electoral wards in Nyaki West, in North Imenti, and Kwanjenga in Embakasi resulted in, so in voter suppression. Uh, the allegation uh, of voter suppression due to postponement of, the, of these uh, elections is not a question of hypothesis. It's a question of fact. It's a question of numbers. What I have done is we have gone through the numbers to give you a comparative data on whether the same is true. Uh, the first one, as it relates to Kitui Rural, we have gotten the data for the constituencies in Kitui. Your Ladyship, if you look at the constituencies for Kitui, that voter turnout for Kitui Rural was 60.29%. So for us to actually make a comparative data and an analysis to actually see whether there's been voter suppression, we look at the constituencies nearby and see the data we are getting from the constituencies nearby, whether the, the inference can be made by this court that the, there's been voter suppression. The voter turnout for Kitui Rural is 60.29%. I have highlighted in yellow uh, in your screens. It is comparatively similar to the voter turnout in, uh, in Kitui Central. In fact, it is, uh, Kitui Rural is higher. Kitui Central is 60.10. It's comparative to Muingi Central. So to the question the court asked whether there was voter suppression in Kitui uh, Central constituency because of the postponed election, the answer is an emphatic no. I will go to the second question. The second question the court asked is whether the postponement of elections in Kachaliba and Pokot South re led to uh, a voter suppression that led to a low voter turnout in favor of the petitioner. The answer is data-based. I have provided the comparative analysis. I want the court to look at it. The voter turnout for West Pokot was 81.44. The voter turnout for, Poc uh, West Poc uh, uh, for Kachaliba was, was 81.44. I have highlighted in yellow. The voter turnout for Pokot South is 80.44. It is higher than Kapenguria. It is higher than Sigor. Comparatively, in fact, those voter turnouts were higher than the ones which the election were not proposed. That claim falls flat on the data that were provided to court. I will proceed. I will go to Rongai. The question the court asks is whether the postponed elections in Rongai led to suppression of voter. I have provided the, the data on Rongai. Uh, the voter turnout of Rongai was 61.41 for the presidential. It is, it is higher than in Joro. It is higher uh, than in uh, Naivasha. And it's comparatively similar to the other similar constituencies. To the allegation that there was water suppression in those places because of the election that was postponed, that allegation is untrue, falls flat on the data we have provided. To the other question, whether the, uh, the postponed uh, elections in the MC award for Nyaki West led to voter suppression, uh, the, the voter turnout for Nyaki West was 64.32. If you look at North Imenti, it was even lower. It's comparatively similar to the other we have provided. To that allegation, that falls flat on the data than the comparative data we have provided. To the allegation that the MC award in Kwanjenga, that, the, that there was voter suppression because of that, the MC award in Kwanjenga, the voter turnout was 46.32, comparatively similar to Embakasi South, which is 49.62, comparatively similar to, uh, uh, to Imara Daima, and, in, and also in Pipeline. To that allegation, when you look at the comparative data, it's not a matter of hypothesis, it is not borne out by the data. To the allegation that the postponed elections in Kakamega led to voter suppression in, in terms of uh, the petitioners' votes being undercast, the allegation falls flat on the comparative data. We have provided the data for Vihiga, which is similar. Bungoma was a bit higher, but Vihiga is, is the same. So comparatively, when you look at those data points, that allegation falls flat. To the allegation that uh, in Mombasa, 
there, there was a voter suppression because of the election that was won. I want to point out, even in 2017, the general voter turnout in Mombasa is generally very low. That data is available. It's always lower than the other constituencies. But comparatively, it is almost something that uh, is comparable. To those, so I, I, will ha I have answered. So to the question that the court put out on the comparative data, the answer is there was no voter separation in those places. Senior Counsel Kamau Karori has already explained on the reasons why those uh, elections was not held. It was not, there was nothing premeditated about those elections, uh, uh, not holding those elections. S reasons have been given in the affidavits of the chairman Wifula Chepukati and, and Marjan Hussein Marjan. So to that allegation, we, have, uh, we want to show the court they, uh, the petitioners have a hypothesis. We have provided the data to the court to actually aid the court to come to a conclusion. The second question I want to answer that the court, uh, the, the court put out uh, to us was whether there are unexplainable discrepancies between the votes cast for the presidential candidates and other elective posts. Indeed, if there was unexplainable discrepancies, is a grave issue, which we know. We will show through the data that we have provided to the court that the same is not true. In fact, we can account for each ballot. Uh, to just guide the court, refer to the affidavit of Moses Ledama Sunkuli, uh, which is on record. Uh, we have provided the comparative analysis. In fact, what I did is we provided the 34C, the, 30, uh, the, uh, the 37C, 38C, and 39C. Those are the forms uh, for the governor, uh, the senator, and the women rep. We turn it against the presidential. I want to refer the, the court to paragraph 36 of Moses Ledama's affidavit for the court to look at it. And if you do a tally, and we, we, we started with a tally for Senate, if you do a tally for the votes that were cast for the Senate, vis-a-vis, -vis, and that, your ladyship, that runs from page 13 of Ledama's affidavit up to page 15. And I just did the, 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 an, the summary analysis, but there's a very big, uh, big comparative table that I've put out there. If you do the analysis, you will come to the following conclusion. What is the voter difference between the senator and the presidential? 500 votes, the variance. And how do we account for those variance? So when you do the presidential like for like and the senator, you will get a difference of 22,801. You have to minus diaspora voters, which only vote for the presidential. You have to minus prisons, which only vote in the presidential elections. OK? And then you have to look at stations which were affected and did not have any results for any of those, of, of those uh, elective posts. For example, in some of the stations, some few stations, some violence happened. Likely, they did not report for Senate. When you do that analysis, you will get the differential is 500 votes. I have done an elaborate analysis also on the stray ballots. When we, we get to that, I will explain. So the differential between the Senate and the presidential is 500 votes. And that 500 votes, we can account for in stray ballots. I have attached the polling day diaries for Kibra and Makadara. I have done an analysis to actually check what is the stray ballot per constituency. And this style is like for like. So to the question whether there was a discrepancy, between the presidential and the Senate vote, the answer is an emphatic no. It is explainable by looking at what the information that we have provided. To the second question, whether there was a discrepancy between the women, uh, women uh, member of National Assembly for, for, for the women rep as compared to the presidential, I will tell the court to look at uh, page 18, page 17 and 18 of Moses Ledama's affidavit. And our answer is there is no much difference. And the differences can be accounted for. The variance analysis we have provided. To the question whether there was a discrepancy between governor and presidential, we have also explained that there is no such variance. Petitioners have been talking of variance of 800,000, 900,000. There's no such variance. And in fact, the small variance that you will see for the women rep, which is 9,419, can be explained for by the straight ballots. A small analysis we did for the straight ballots, your leadership, is that on, in Kebra constituency alone, 
we got, we did a stray ballot analysis, and, and it's, it's shown there. So, we, so, so to explain, and, and, and this is how we understood the court to mean the duty of the IEBC is to explain each ballot cast and track that ballot to see where it has gone. So once we do the analysis for the presidential and we remove the prison voters, once we remove the people who voted for diaspora, once we removed some of the small polling stations that did not report for any of those seats, you will see a small variance. So we thought the court will ask where that small variance is coming from. And so what I, what I did is we went and we, we went to sample one of the constituencies in Nairobi. And in, only, in one of the constituencies, in Kibra constituency, we got 405 stray ballots. So you can't account for the way, the, the way it will work is it will, it will take from any of those ballots small incremental numbers. So you will see a variance of 500 here, 200 here, but cumulatively, it is not something that cannot be explained. And I have attached all the polling day diaries. In fact, if you look at the Form 34A, which was applied to the court, some of the comments section will indicate that they found some stray ballot in the presidential ballot. But to the court, whether there is discrepancy between the senatorial governor and the women rep seats, as compared to the presidential, there is none. We have demonstrated that with data. And even when there's a small variance, we have shown the stray ballots that cumulatively over those three seats, that will be, that will be there. A question was, uh, a, a submission was made by, uh, by learned counsel, Ms. Julie Soweto, that there is 33 per polling station stray ballots in Kirinyaga. I will explain that. I don't know uh, what, uh, what numbers they are using. It's an old uh, litigation strategy in numbers for shock and oh. I think what they, are, what they are trying to, if you look at the numbers for Kirinyaga, there is no difference between presidential and the governor of 22,000. In fact, the variance is 900 votes, which can be explained for by the stray ballot. The number they have indicated for governor, I don't know where they have gotten it from, is not what is in our 37C, and we've indicated that in our submission and also in our, in our, in our presentation. So to the question that the court asked, that whether there are inexplainable discrepancies between the votes cast for presidential as against the governor, for presidential as against the women rep, for presidential as against the Senate, the same is not borne out by the data that we have provided to the court. Now I'll go to another issue which was made heavy weather off by learned councils on the voter turnout. Justice Smoking Wanjala asked, does it, how important is the voter turnout to the, actually, to the actual valid votes and to the actual declarations? Of course, it's an important issue. The only problem with, the, with it is that council are not understanding how we calculate voter turnout. And I want to explain to the court how voter turnout calculation is done using the kits. Pursuant to the Maina Kiai case, the court was very emphatic that elections must be conducted at the polling stations. And pursuant to that, voter turnout reporting is done per polling station. So how do we do it? When the polling station opens and Kenyans are voting, depending on the network access of the kids, the kids will be sending us information every two hours. They will giving us, they will be, the kids will be telling us 200 people has passed by this kit in this polling station. And that information will be collated until the end of polling day. So two things to note here. The first one is that the reporting is done per KIMS, 
per polling station of the reporting kings. So for example, on the 9th August 2022, when the polls closed, the IEBC gave a turnout figure of 56.1679%, which is the percentage turnout. That correlated to the total number of registered voters in those schemes, in those polling stations. The problem, the, the problem that the petitioners are having, they're saying these 56.1679% you announced must be of the total people in the register, which is 22 million 140 thousand 258, 120 thousand two, uh, 258. We don't do that. We report per Kim. So if 200 people reported in that Kim, and the number of registered voters is 600, we say 200 of 600 voters. We add the next Kim, 300 people have reported. We say 300 over 600 voters. The next scheme, 400 uh, uh, schemes have reported, 400 over 600. We keep on aggregating until we see how many schemes have reported of those polling stations. Why do we do that? Because of two reasons. The first one is, which is in the affidavit of Hussein Marjan and the affidavit of the chairman, because of network issues in some places, far flung places in Kenya, some of those schemes will report late some of those schemes will report much later. So if we did a number over the total number of registered voters, we'll be giving a false turnout. So the turnout we give is based on the aggregated voters of the reporting station in that scheme. So if you took the first, the first when we announced, the 56.1679% is based on the total registered voters in those stations who have reported in those schemes, which was 21 million four. 81,642. Your ladyship, you'll realize this is much lower than the total number of registered voters. And we'll keep on accumulating. Kims will keep on reporting. 235 polling stations went manual. We will, we will have to later on aggregate the 235 polling stations which went manual. Then we come with a, a, a total voter turnout. And if that is the reporting we do, two arguments that have been made in the petition of Omtata and in the petition of uh, uh, number five, fall off. The first one is, they, will say, they are saying, they are, they are contention, is that the chairman announced a, turn, a turnout on 10th August 2022. That is the third, uh, the third line, uh, your ladyship and members of the court, uh, announced a turnout of 65.4%. What we have indicated is 64.6%. Your Ladyship, I will pause there to just inform the court that the chairman clarified that statement. The recording is in the affidavit of the chairman. And the actual clarification the chairman gave, he said, that the total reporting polling stations, and, and if you hear his statement, it will, it will give some clarification. We never say the total number of registered voters, because we will have that information when our manual count and everything has reported. We say total number of polling stations reporting. So in those schemes. So they're saying 64.6% must be of the total registered voters. That is their contention. That is their voter turnout. That is not the voter turnout of IEBC. The voter turnout as a percentage was, at that point, 64.6%. The number of reporting schemes were 21,926,565. You will notice from this number, there are some polling schemes which haven't reported. As they go to the constituency challenge center, those, those schemes will, will report. You will also notice that we haven't included the manual count to give us a total figure of the total uh, 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 voters who will, will have registered, who will have reported. <coughs> On 10 August, when all the schemes have returns have, have come from all, all the polling stations, the number of persons identified, that is the last uh, number on, on the table, 14,239,862. As against the total registered voters in those stations which reuse the Kims, 22,005,541, giving a turnout of 
64.7103. You notice your ladyship, we haven't included the manual count. So that is all Kims in all polling stations. What remains now? Manual count. And this is important. I will pause there. We were very deliberate in trying to help the court in, uh, in be able to identify and actually provide an audit process for the contesting parties' allegations. In the affidavit of Michael Ouma, we have attached seven volumes of the Kim's returns for every polling station in the Republic. Why is that important for the petitioners and the court? That is the first audit trail process. How is it at the first audit trail process of? We've provided the Kim's returns per polling stations in the Republic. We've also provided the certified copy of the 30A. So if anyone wanted to look at how many people pass in that polling station, you will look at your Kim's return, you will look at your 34A. And if there is any inconsistencies between the Kim's return and the 34A provided to the court, then question can be asked to our client. So in providing an audit trail process, the first way of providing an audit, which is both manual and electronic, is the Kim's return provided in the affidavit of Michael Oma in seven volumes, as again as the certified copy of 34A we provided as per the regulations of this court. So we provided that. And if you look at those Kim's returns, they will correspond with this. Uh, they are from 45,994 polling stations. The number of identified by Kim's 14,229,862. The total number of registered voters 22,005,591. And the percentage is as indicated. We've indicated how many Kims there were. And I just want to, uh, to, and after the aggregation uh, of the manual and the Kims, and, and that's the table that's, that's, that's there. So to the question, I think what is, that is important for the court, and the court will ask, is the first question that Okol will ask, what is the registered voters in the Republic? And, and I think that is not contested. 22 million, 120, 458. I think it's in the affidavit of, of, of everyone that the register is publicly available, that can be accessed. How many polling stations do we have in the Republic? 46,229. How many people are registered in those polling stations? 22 million, 120, 458. How many polling stations were authenticated through using the kits? 45,994. How many registered voters are those in those polling stations? 14,239,862. What are the registered voters in those polling stations authenticated through the kits? 22,005,591. What are the polling stations that were not authenticated through the kits? 235, out of which six polling stations, three in Eldas and three in Cuisero, there was violence. And no voting uh, 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 took place, in fact, at the time of, 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 of that. And so how many polling stations went manual? Using complementary system, 229. What are the number of voters authenticated through the complementary manual system? 86,889. What are the registered voters in those 235 polling stations? 114,917. Why are these numbers important? They are important for audit trail. First, we have provided the Kim's returns to the court, which can be compared as against. Secondly, 99.9914% of Kenyans were authenticated through the Kim's. Less than 0.001 Kenyans were authenticated through a complementary mechanism. And the reason why I go back to that is, pro, is giving the court an integrity check as to the, what we did. So if we are telling the court that 99.99% of Kenyans were authenticated through the kits, we have provided the receipts from those kits to the court, we have provided the Form 34A, then the court can compare and will bear out the work we did. Another allegation falls off 
So what is the allegation in the Omtata petition? And I will go back to the, to the turnout table. My ladyship. They are saying that the turnout announced by the chairman on 10th August 2022 must be over the total registered voters. That is where the mysterious 140,000 is coming from. So they are saying the 64.60 must be from the 22 million 124.58. We are telling them that is not how we calculate our turnout. It was very easy to confirm with us and, and, and ask us how you do it. We're telling them that number is out of 21,926,565. We could not do it over the registered voters because some stations went manual, some schemes had not reported. How will we give a number over a total in which this, we don't know the status of some of those stations? Because the returns have to come for us to, to be able to give, to, to give that. So that they're saying 64.6 over the total voter turnout will give you 140,000. IEBC has not accounted for 140,000 voters. It's a lie. I think they are wrong on the maths and they are wrong on the substance and they are wrong on the substratum of how we are calculating that. And I think it's, it's imperative that the court uh, understands that. So the, idea, the issue of 140,000 is not here nor there. Uh, and, 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 and we have demonstrated that. And the second issue is they say that there's 110 voters, error, 110 error in the Form C. By virtue of that, the Form C is not a valid vote. We have acknowledged that error. It's a data entry error in two stations in Kilifi and one station in West Pokot. It is at, the, the, the error form for the C is attached to the chairman's affidavit of 110. The Form C is a collation of 46,229 polling stations and there's an error of 110 in which we have explained the data entry. I think that is not something that is material to the Form C for the court to say that a Form C is invalid because of an error which you have acknowledged. Your Ladyship, we also want to confirm to the court, we have done an error report for each and every polling station in the Republic. And this is going to be, and, and we really are craving for, for the scrutiny report to bear, and this will bear us out. That the vote, that the voters, what Kenyans voted on the 9th of August is what was transmitted and it's what was actually announced by the chairman. The will of the Kenyan people was carried out through and through. And that will be borne on by the scrutiny of those ballot boxes. That will be borne out by the information and the data we have given. And that is really, uh, really, uh, really important. The other issue I want to actually address is allegations that have been, uh, uh, your ladyship, if I could just go to, to, to uh, the affidavit of uh, uh, mother, uh, uh, I mean, th this, is, this is what I was, I was talking to. I mean, there's an allegation of paragraph 96 of the affidavit of, of the petitioner that alleges, alleges there's a variance of 25,000 between governor and president. The correct position is there's a variance of 900. It's worth noting the, co the county is home to two prisons. And, and this is what the court should, and, we, have the, we can provide the court, with, even if the court is inclined to even order us to bring the origi all the original Form 34As and the Cs. We are, we are ready and willing to provide that to the court. Some of these allegations, when you look at it, you really cringe that the, the allegations that are being made on these numbers, they have no basis. You will actually wonder how you know, how will someone write something like that in the petition? We have provided a tally of our 30, the, the, the C series for, for the governor, for the senator, and the women rep. And we're ready to provide that to the court. We have put that in our affidavit. We are ready to provide whatever the courts will require to actually prove some of those numbers that are being banned. And the, some of these numbers are just meant for awe and shock. Because it is very shocking to the court, to the conscience of the court, if you are told there are 25,000 people who walked in the, into the polling stations in Kirinyaga voted for the presidential candidate and did not vote for anyone else. It's really amazing. I would expect a variance because of the small stray ballots here and there, or maybe the prisons and diaspora, but it will not be 25,000. It's something should be that is explainable. And that is why they are, the petitioners are wrong on the data, they are wrong on the numbers. And I will also demonstrate they are very wrong on the, even the ICT. Uh, I will add on to uh, what uh, George, uh, Eric Gumbo had also submitted. 
There are two allegations that are being made that the Form 34, uh, and, uh, 34A, and, and I, I want to explain this to the court. So there, we have three audit trails or three verification processes for the court. The first I mentioned, it's the EVI, the electronic voter identification. We have given the Kim's return to the court. So the court will look at the Kim's returns and look at the AOL, the tally. The second one is when the form 34A is being sent, and I've, I've seen a lot of wild allegations being made, and I want to, to, to just uh, explain this to the court. At the end of the polling, what happens is the kit it converts itself into an RTS system, a result transmission system. The PO scans a QR code. It gives him a transition system. So it tells him, OK, Mr. PO, what do you want to transmit? Enter your, uh, uh, enter your PIN. He will enter his code. It gives him a, a query. You tell him, what do you want to do? He says, I want to transmit 34A. He tells him, OK, can you confirm the following checks have happened? And that's a validation check. Can you confirm that this form is signed by a PO? He says, yes. Can you confirm that this form is signed by a DRO, a, de a, a deputy PO? He says, yes. Can you confirm this form is a 34A? He says, yes. Can you confirm this form has been signed by the agents? He says, yes. So after saying all that, then he tells him, take, a, take an image. And, and there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things being banded here about, about the image. The, and we can provide, uh, I think we've done training for the, for the ABC has done training for everyone, for LSK and the judges. And this is something that we can even provide if the kits are required. The kit takes an image, embedded in it, it has a scanner, and the image that is embedded in the KIMS. So it's taking the image, and it's taking the image and scanning it as a PDF. We don't have any other output. We don't, and there's a reason why I'll explain to you why, why that input is being, is, is being made, uh, why, why it's like that for, for purposes of the security and, 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 and the other purposes. He takes the image. It actually tells him if the image is not clear, it will tell him your image is not clear. Please retake it. So he takes his image and he presses send. That image travels from that. It is gone. He cannot recall. In fact, even if he doesn't net, ha, does not have network, it will tell him the image has been sent. It will arrive when it will arrive. That image cannot be recalled in PDF. There's nothing that can be called. That scanned image in PDF, there's nothing that can be done about it. That is gone. When he gets a network or immediately if he has network, it will hit uh, our portal. Now, when he hits our portal, it's something akin to something, someone who's coming in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is established by the Constitution, and it has juris the jurisdiction by the court is limited by the Constitution. So those forms answer some jurisdiction questions before they are admitted into the public portal. What are those questions? So they ask, OK, you have come here. You have come into the court. If you want to sit here inside the court, answer the following question. They are asked. Are you a 34A? He says, yes, I am a 34A. OK. Do you confirm that you come from the code of the polling station? So it has a code of the polling station. So we will, it will run against the polling station codes. It will confirm. Then it is asked, OK, we've confirmed you are an A. We've confirmed that you are from the code of the polling station provided to us, because all our polling stations have specific codes. Then we ask them. Then it's asked the third question. Do you come from a serial number of our kit? Then he answers, yes, I am from the serial number of the kit. If it is another form which is coming, are you from, if it's not from a serial number, it checks. It tells, no, you can't come in here. You have no jurisdiction. So it tells, do you come from a serial number of our kit? He says, yes. Then it's asked, do you come from the, the SIM card that has been provided officially that we have the list for from the various provider? It answers yes. Then it's given two security features, which are very important for the court. So it's given two security features. It is given a date stamp. And I urge the court to interact with the public portal. I want to confirm to the court 800 million uh, persons access our portal. It did not even blink for a second. Its security, its firewalls, and the, and the SOC are military grade. 
And in fact, a lot of the allegations that are coming from the other side is people are so frustrated in trying to hack our system is, why is your system so good? Our system is so good because it's based on blockchain. It actually, what it does, it actually gives resources as is required. If the 50 million Kenyans logged in now to our portal, it will give them without even stuttering whatever form they want. And it will allocate resources on how many people? Out of those 380 million people, 300 million were Kenyans who downloaded, who looked at the result. So after asking that, it gives two things. It gives a timestamp. The form is given a timestamp, and it's given a date stamp. Now, with that, one of the allegations of staging falls away. So someone is telling you, someone captured a form, amended it, returned it. I am telling you, all my forms have a date and timestamp to the millisecond. And there is no one form that has been transmitted at the same time. And in fact, if you look at the portal, you will see that. You open the portal, if you look at the tab of the portal, it will say 34A. It will tell you the polling station. It will tell you the Kim serial. It will tell you the date the form came. And how precise is this system? Some of those forms came on the date of the election. Some of the forms, because of tallying, came a day later. Some of them came at, uh, two days later because of the elections in Eldas. And it will give you the time sum to the millisecond. And actually, if you look at it, so if someone is telling you, oh, we had staging of 11,000 forms, you will expect that to the millisecond, right, to the millisecond, you will get 11,000 forms which have been uploaded. And I want to inform the court, there is no one who can upload the Form 34A. Form 34A are only transmitted from the Kims by the PO. Neither Wafula Chebukati, nor Hussein Marjan, nor Boya Molu, nor anyone else can upload Form 34A. Form 34A is transmitted from the polling station, goes, and that is the end of that story. And once it goes, it's asked those questions. Now, our forms are designed that way. Why? Some of the forms that have been brought to you, and with due, tremendous respect, I, was, I, I spend a lot of time with my ICT people and look at some. Some of those forms are doctored forms. Why are they doctored? Because of the audit trail that will not allow anyone to be able to actually not be able to verify our forms. Why? So I told you about the EVID and the KIMS, returns plus the form. So these forms have three manual processes and three electronic processes that check each other for the court. And this is very important for the court to actually assess those allegations. So what are the three manual processes? PO fills the forms, gives to the agent. Paste it's there, okay? Travel, so the first one. If you had an agent there, you will get your form. Or it will be in the polling station, it will be stamped in the polling station. The second one is, okay, I didn't have a PO. What check do I have? So I will both someone who did not have an agent and person who had. So if I didn't have an agent in the polling station, that form travels to the arrow. What does the arrow do with the form? His PO will sit there, he'll tell him, I have received the form in the portal, I want to confirm the form you have brought me is the same as the portal. Is it the same serial number? Is it from that Kim's kit? Does the tally agree with what is in the portal? He has a back end for his B, because he has to start populating his B. So he takes the form. So we allow at the council tally center to have agents. If you want copies of the form, can be given. So if you didn't have agent at the polling station, you can still get your form at the uh, council tally center. So say you didn't have an agent at the constituency tallying center, you didn't have an agent at the polling station. You, we bring the form out to the national tallying center. And I think this is what, the reason why this court made the decision that the chairman must verify each and every form. And court will take judicial notice of what was going on in Bomas. We had 14 verification desks. The arrow will come. I had the pleasure of actually going through the process. The arrow will come. He will be told, OK. You have come with your forms, sit, he will be admitted, and then the verification desk will have all the four agents for all the presidential candidates. We take the forms as they are, we make copies of the originals for them. Remember they have their agents' forms. We make copies of the original, we tell them, okay, these are the copies of our original. 
have your agent forms, compare with our originals, but also what we are going to do is not a verification process. We'll do a forensic audit for you. We'll, we'll call the arrow, he will sit on the table there, he will go form by form. Is it the same serial number? Is it from that polling station? We provided microtext readers, we provided watermark readers of the originals. The agents are seated there, they will check and they will look at it. And the form will have the IEBC, it will have the watermark reader, it will have everything. So even if you don't have the forms at the CTC and at the polling station, and you had the form at the uh, constituency, uh, and you are given the form as the, at, the, at the NTC, you could still verify and actually check. After that, we'll, they will go to an ICT desk. The ICT now will confirm whether those forms and what is in the portal is the same. And some of the persons who've sworn some of the affidavits in the petition were seated in, on those tables. The ICT will open up this portal. We say, oh, this is the public portal. I am looking at the form. Let's confirm what is in the form, what is in the Do they tally? They tally. If there's any issue, we do an error report, which we have provided to the court. We'll pro we have provided error report to them. That process is documented. And even if you didn't have all those agents, then you had an opportunity to do at the, at the National Tallying Center. After that, we tell them, okay, we've started populating the sea. Now, have you verified this polling station? Yes. Okay, now we put that into our sea. And the idea that the sea was kept on changing and some officers had, had access to the sea, actually that allegation falls off. Why? 14 officers, and we've attached that into the affidavit of uh, Martin Nyaga, including the chairman's PA, Mr. Abdi Dyer, who is a registered, uh, uh, who is a, a returning officer, and, and 14 other persons were mandated to actually do that verification process on the table. There's a process for them to be given that access, and the access, what access do they have? People are burning up a lot of things, servers and things like that. So there are three applications level in any system. You will have the, 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 the application, you will have the operating system and the network, okay? So everyone has access. So they have access for the verification of the 34C. So they'll be told, we're putting in this polling station to the C. Are you okay with it? Does this tally with what is in the original? They will say, yes, that is populated. When we finish for one constituency, we print that aspect of the form 34C. Because form 34C is something that is gradual. The verified form from the form that has traveled from Kipini in Lamu to the CTC, Constituency Tallying Center, through, through the portal, physically through BOMAS, through the verification decks of the agents and the people complaining here, uh, now, will now, they are told, are you okay if we put into the sea? It's put into the sea. It's printed out and that is what was being announced. So if you got the logs for the sea, it will say, Maha, uh, the person who's authorized printed out a C because it was being announced. Some of the commissioners now complaining were announcing those forms. And it's criminal. It will go on until, until we finish. Now, coming back to the form. So the first security feature is if you look at the portal I've indicated, it has all those. But we put security features to enable the court and everyone to authenticate our forms. If you open our forms in Acrobat Reader, you will get a signature panel. you will get a signature panel. And the signature panel is able to tell you the path of valid valid validation of our forms. It will tell you that this form, in fact, the timestamp you'll get on the signature panel is the same as the timestamp where that form was received at the portal. And I've, 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 I've projected, your ladyship have projected there. And if you are a good acrobat, it will tell you, it, has, it will give you a signature panel. It will tell you that this form was not first modified. If you have any, any PDF form uh, document and you have modified it, it will tell you this document was modified on this date by XYZ. It will tell you this form has not been modified from that date. It will also give you a, a signing, a signature. You see that, that time there? That is the time that is on the, when it was received on the portal. It's the same time, timestamp that when you open any form on the portal, it will indicate. So the allegation that forms were intercepted, staging happened, the, 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 the authentication of, of our forms are, are, very, are very robust. So the second one now. So, someone, so how is someone able to prove that the, our forms 
do not tally with what is in the portal. You only have to do one thing. You have to download our forms from the portal, get a, a relatively good Photoshop, and change the numbers on the tally. And I'll come to those allegations where the 34A in the portal are the same as what was given to the agents. We have provided 44 affidavits from various POs. Some of our POs who are Kenyans have had a very sleepless night. Allegations have been made against them that they have, the forms they, were, they brought to the ROs were different from what was brought, what was announced. The allegations of an affidavit made by someone should be checked against the affidavits of each and every polling station clerk and polling uh, presiding officer who we have endeavored to give the affidavits to the court. And we have given 44 affidavits for presiding officers on these allegations and many more affidavits for the, uh, for the returning officers. So the only way you will be able to show is you have to check, print out our form. And the problem with that one is because you cannot do anything about this, where the agents and everything sign, you have to get a Photoshop, amend it to JPEG, get a Photoshop and actually re just remove with the tally. But like every other plan, it has a lot of weaknesses. And the first weakness you will get is, and the first thing they say is, in Gaina polling station in Tiati, that their agent provided them a form. And this is really important for the court. We say untruths have only one leg. They don't have two legs to, to stand on. The truth stands firm. They say in Gaina polling station, and this is in the affidavit of Anolo Chieng, that their agent provided them a form. The form is different to what is in the portal. If you look at what is in the portal, that is in the affidavit of uh, uh, Moses Sunkuli, and even the form he is attached himself, it says there was no agent in Gaina polling station. We haven't even gone to authentication and the verification of the process and the form, and I will show that why this is a bad Photoshop gone wrong. So the first allegation is, in Gaina polling station, their agent gave them a form, the tally for the presidential candidate is different from that. Guess what? The form they provided does not indicate it, that there was no agent, and even our portal says there was no agent for any candidate, not only for them. In Gaina, there was no agent for, I don't know why the, the parties didn't send an agent there, maybe because of security in Tiati, or, or we don't know. But there was no agent for anyone. He says, I had an agent, and this is his tally. So to the question that whether the forms, the forms provided by the agents are the same as what is in the portal, the court will, has to come to one conclusion. They are, those forms that are being provided in those stations are doctored. They are forgeries, and bad forgeries at that. The first paragraph of that affidavit says so. The other thing you'll notice, that what they have attached, we were very deliberate why our kids, Kim's kit will have an imaging software embedded and sent in PDF. One is because of the security I've indicated. The second one is because, since it is black and white, and, and agents will be taking pictures of the form, we wanted to, to, to differentiate between what the agents are taking with their form and what we are sending ourselves. So what have they done? Our forms have been printed from the portal, converted to JPEG, numbers fudged. But the problem is, all the background for those forms are our Kim's kit. It's what we sent in the portal. And I've indicated that in the affidavit of Moses Sunkuli. The second and the more problematic thing, and analytically the court will ask, is it possible that 44 agents all over Kenya will take pictures of forms in black and white, the same as the background of our Kim's kit.
And the reason is because of the robustness of our processes. Because we have a manual check and we also have an electronic check. The manual check I have described, the electronic check, the EVI, the second electronic check I have described how our forms arrive. So if someone made an allegation that, oh, the form of my agent is different from what I have, the court should ask, okay, we have a portal, we have IEBC POs who are saying something else, we have the original, which has gone different stages, how come it's only your form? And what is five, your leadership, I, I want to point out to the court, is the only thing that has been amended in those forms is the number of tallies. Why have they done that? To tell the court, oh, look, IEBC portal is different from what we have. Okay, if you are thinking, and, we, and, and, and the challenge that I have been given uh, by, uh, uh, the challenge that I've been, I've been told by my ICT people is we will leave the, our portal open for another year. If any one of these uh, people who are alleging anything, let them go upload one form. And we took our constitutional duty very seriously to give that audit trail to the court for the court to be able to make a, a determined decision. I will mention three things on ICT. The first one is John Gidongo has given us an affidavit, which we have answered with uh, Martin Yaga's affidavit. He has given forged logs. And when, when we actually answered and actually told him these are forged logs from 2017, he said, oh, these are demo, but these are the real ones. But I think the court should look at the real logs. For example, one of the logs that is charged is the one for Justice Nyangaya. Justice Nyangaya attached Linux cron logs. The leadership is, is like, and he says these people had access. It's easy to read those logs. They do not mention, no one of those people had access. It's like someone telling you, as you are using your computer, it's running background information. It will give a lot of, a lot of the OS will be running. It gives a lot of information. And someone says, oh, I had access the laptop of, of, of the judges and did this. And the information that person is giving you is the OS system. Oh, this server, uh, the, uh, the, the, there was an update of this program, there was this. If there was any evidence of that, you should provide something that says, this person access at this day on this, at this time. So the, even the logs which are attached to Justin Yangai's affidavit are not, are not things that will bear out the allegations they are making. The second thing that I want to mention to the court is the affidavit, a lot of people have, have made uh, the, the submissions by the petitioners was that the affidavit of Benson Wesonga and and John Joroge proves there was access. We've answered those affidavits, and you will really, it will surprise this court that Joroge says, I audited the IEBC system. And in answering the first question, we told him, that is a criminal offense. How do you have access to the IEBC system? Which, of course, is a lie. Then he attaches logs. Some of them cooked up, but some of them we've answered. So for example, he says, the chairman's PA, a gentleman of repute, an advocate of this court who has been a row all over the country, who was part of the 15 people who were doing verification on the bomber's desk, who all the agents were present when they were making the verification of the sea. Oh, him he accessed, and two other people. How many times? 1,000 times. First, what did they access? I told you, no one can access or upload anything apart from the Kim Sone. They what they accessed was at the verification panel for the C, and all the agents were there. Did they require the chairman to sit there entering manually the 46? And in fact, we have attached the authorization for each and every person who was seated on that table. And talk should, the court should take judicial notice of what was going on in Bomas and the constitutional time relating to the, uh, to the seven day. Those people had access, the agents were there, everyone was there, and of course, they will verify. He verified 1,000, another person will verify 800. There are Kenyans who have not slept for five, six days to actually, 
undertake a constitutional duty of a higher calling. Not well remunerated people who hadn't slept for six, seven days. They are actually what they are doing is, oh, I, they access, yes, what were they supposed to do? They will access the, the, the RTS panel for the C. They will verify you are there. The deponent was on the floor of bombers. Chorogia was there. Their agents were there. Their ICT was there. And the court should make note of there was no one allegation that a form that is in the portal was different than an original which they had verified as it relates to the tally. So there's another argument that they say, oh, our client, uh, the, the petitioner votes were deducted and added to this. We told them, show us the proof. How are they deducted? We have seven proofs. So in, in mathematics, you use proofs to prove a point, uh, to prove knowns and unknowns. We have seven proofs. We have our rows at the, at the polling station. They had agents. You had agents at the CTC. We have the original. You have agents at the NTC. We have original. We have what is transmitted in the portal. We have original. All of them tally, and you are saying your clients' votes were deducted. How? I will mention a small issue on the register. I want to note the court. We understood the issues as framed by the court as those issues. The issue of the register was not one of the issues. We have answered in the par uh, at paragraph 85 of Hussein Marjan and Michael Omar's affidavits. We did an audit as per the law. The audit was given as required by the law, was transmitted to the speaker of both houses. We did a resolution of most of those audit processes. We have documented what has been done. 262,000 deceased people were removed. There were some Kenyans who had registered both with their passport and IDs. And that process of audit is an ongoing process. We will endeavor to complete it, but I want to confirm to the court that that audit process undertook, and we acted on that audit process, and we went to a, with a clean register. With the elections. An allegation was made that, oh, your client was printing 34 A's, many of them to actually do something untoward. We want to tell the court, and we have put before the court, that the reason that was, was actually done, book two of two and book one of one, is to ensure that as many Kenyans as possible had copies of the 34A. So you have a form 34A, and if you printed only six copies, one, copies, one copy goes to the ballot box. One copy is supposed to be attached to the polling station. Those are two copies. Four copies are supposed to be given to presidential uh, 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 copies to the presidential candidate. Then we have an issue that a copy has to go to the arrow. And what we did is we, we, we wanted to print many copies of the A's for the purposes of the result. And the reason why, because the carbon copy, if you reach six and you are actually writing on the carbon copy that you are giving copies of, when you reach the third copy, it will not even be able to, you will not be able to read it. When that happened, the petitioners, together with religious leaders, traveled to Greece, and they, and, and they raised an issue. They say they did not want book two of two. So what did we do? We just gave instructions. We had a meeting with them. The same was shared by the chairman. The chairman, the same directive was given to our officers, and when they opened the polling stations, book two of two was being put in the ballot box. 34, two of two.
an allegation was made, and, and this is, I, 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 I think my, my ICT people have told me they actually want to buy the patent of this technology, that, I, that a JPEG of handwritten document can be converted to C CSV amended on a form that has signatures and watermark and converted back to PDF and uploaded. If such technology exists, we actually want to buy its patent. It's actually impossible to do that. And that is why all of the forms that have been submitted, the only thing that can be done is you have to just look at the tally numbers and try to use Photoshop to change the tally numbers. You can't do that. Because the verification process has eight stages. This form is widely available from the village to the NTC that for someone to say that, oh, my 34A has been tampered with, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's impossibility. To just conclude, the petitioner's case says 500,000 Kenyans who conducted the elections, POs, deputy POs, ROs, and everyone, conspired against them. That is, the numbers don't pan out. The allegations of the form don't pan out. And the question I kept on asking, and this court should ask is, what if on the day of the election, God forbid, that the RTS system of IEBC collapsed? And the only thing that is available to this court are original form 34A. Will this court say, since your RTS system collapsed, there is no election that you held, that the franchise and the vote of the Kenyan cannot be gotten from those ballot boxes and those forms. And the second question, and which is really, and we have indicated that in the firewalls and the affidavit of Hila Kavogo, and the, how robust our system was, and how many, who, who tried to, 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 to do that. The other question is, 300 million Kenyans access that portal. They know the results as indicated. Those results can be verified from the forms, original available, from the forms of the agent. And I think the court should make a determination that their numbers don't add up. The allegations of the form fall flat on what we have demonstrated. And the allegations relating to forms in the portal being different from what their agents have are an attempt to actually present the court with evidence that it forged. And the court should actually look at those documents, look at those forged logs, and take necessary action against any officer who will have presented those logs or documents. Allegations have been made about Gudino and access. You will find in the affidavit of Hila Kavogo, those people were leads who were actually providing ICT help in the, at the level of the systems. Any, every person was logged off from our system on the 8th of August. There is an email we have attached to the affidavit as it relates to that. Anyone who had access to our systems was someone who was authorized to do. And finally, and I, 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 the court should ask the question, whether the 50 
percent plus one was met. And, and, and to that question, your ladyship, the late Justice Antonin Scalia, whenever he went to give lectures uh, uh, to all over the United States, everyone used to ask him about Bush v. Go. And he will, he, will, he will know whether someone is a Republican or a Democrat as to the question they will ask. And his answer will be, get over it. It's over. So to 50 plus 1, the court made its determination in 2013 on the vote cast and valid votes and the rejected ballot, rejected and not votes. Votes is an authentication of preference. There's nothing called rejected votes. That's a rejected ballot. The court emphatically made that decision in 2013 and in 2017. To the petitioner's answer as to that, I think the simple answer will be get over it. With those few remarks, I yield the floor. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, my colleague, Mr. Mahat. Madam Chief Justice, Madam Deputy Chief Justice, honorable members of the